right, today I wanted to go over the common causes for EVAP leak codes PO456 and PO457. They're quite common on any of the newer vehicles that are out because the systems are so sensitive to any kind of leak in the EVAP system. So this one has a PO456 and it's a 2010 Escape. And I'm going to show you the two common causes and how to check them. And we're going to do an EVAP test with a fancy scan tool here, and I'll show you before and after. The first thing the EVAP test does is pull a vacuum on the system, lines, canister, and all. And then it's going to turn off the system and watch for a bleed up of the vacuum. And you can see right there, it was all the way to the right, it jumped right away. There wasn't even a bleed up. It just jumped, so it failed immediately in this car. Now the most common cause for these two EVAP leak codes is actually the canister purge valve. Once it's done pulling a vacuum on the system, it should be shutting off and sealing completely because that vacuum test is, like I said, checking the canister and all the lines. So if this thing has a path back to the intake, it will actually, um, fail the evap test because it's losing the vacuum through there and this is what it looks like it's a fairly common failure for many concerns I made a short video on it before about uh, lean codes these cause also on the newer vehicles that are more sensitive uh, but the most common one um, for these older vehicles I'd say 09 when they first started using these on is a P1450 code and the PO456 PO457 and uh, they're very simple to change out. They're pretty cheap. There's two bolts right there, connector, and these lines pop right off of here. Now, without a scan tool or anything like that, I'm going to show you how to test them in case you didn't see the other video. Um, you're going to have the engine running, and then you're going to pull this connector off of here. You're going to squeeze the two white tabs. You see them right there? Pull this off, put it to the side, and then it's going to have a fluttering uh, vacuum uh, suction coming out of here. You Put your finger on it and it'll stick to it. Once you disconnect this electrical connector right here, while the engine's running still, it should not have that flutter sound anymore or be sticking to your finger, which means it's losing the vacuum from the intake out this port. Just like this, twist this so you can get access to those two tabs on there. Take it off. Your finger should stick to it. You hear that? Once you disconnect this, that noise and the suction coat should go away. Now the noise went away, but the actual vacuum did not. It'll stick to my finger. It should not be doing that. And that's where we're losing our vacuum in the EVAP system and therefore failing the EVAP test. Now in order to change this out of here, it's very simple. Just pull off that line like we did earlier during testing, electrical connector. And then your two 8mm bolts. Now this valve is located right behind the throttle body. The throttle body is over here. And it's a little bit harder to get to as far as the bolts go, but I wanted to show you how it slides in and out of there. And these are even easier, they're right in the front of the intake on the 2.5 liter escapes. After the bolts are out, it simply pulls right out of there. Let's wiggle that out. And the same thing go back in, let's make sure it's free of debris so we don't put anything into the intake. We're just going to slide the new one right into there. Hopefully, you can see that. Slides right in. You bolt it back up, pop your lines and your connector back on, and we can retest. Now, the other thing that's common is the actual filler neck right here. I'm talking these ones right here with the 
easy fuel system that have no cap on them. What they have is a flapper valve down in here and spring pressure uh, to get them sealed back up to a seal in there. So there's no cap to actually seal up the filler neck and that obviously can create a huge evap leak um, and it'll fail that test when it runs it on board while you're driving. So what you got to do in here is, is go in and blow all the garbage out and lubricate it a little bit and blow more garbage out. I got a whole video on how to maintain these and uh, you should, it's a good thing to do every once in a while even before these codes ever set. But this is the other, this is the other common leak source in these newer vehicles. And now you'll see how the EVAP test is supposed to look on here for good results. RPM's being adjusted. Same thing, it's going to start sucking down the tank, the canister, and the lines. It'll go to a calibrated value and cut the engine. There it goes. And now it's going to cut the engine and watch for the bleed up. And that's how it should be right there. You see it's within the two tick marks there. And it'll slowly bleed up just a little bit. There is a federal spec of 20 thousandths leak. So as long as it passes the test and doesn't go past that high mark on there. After a while, if it doesn't start moving, it'll just pass the test and not wait for the full 90 seconds. You can see now it's a big difference. Before it just flew right past that mark. So fast that it actually went to the next screen. And now it'll take that vacuum and bleed it out. Make sure that the canister vent works, and it does. And now it'll show our test results on a graph style format. There it is. And that shows it bleeding up over time. And then it'll also show our spec on here which is federal, which is 20 thousandths, like I said. There we go. 20 thousandths, like I said. And our actual leak size currently is 10 thousandths, or well under spec. And he passed.